Okay, so a while ago, I actually made a video on how to use Groff. And if you haven't seen that, I recommend you watch it because uh, there's a lot of prerequis prerequisites you have to know before watching this video. But in that video, I covered the MS macros. And the MS macros are probably the most popular and widely used macros for Groff. Um, there are other macros, but I just haven't covered them yet. But for this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to use the pick macros, which will actually let you draw, will actually let you draw pictures in graph documents. And if you've ever used LaTeX before, it may seem very similar to, um, I think it's the Tix, T-I-K-Z, Tix is, how you pronounce it, um, drawing system. But I actually um, argue that pick is probably easier and more simple to use. And you'll, you'll find out that probably is. But I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to use it. So I'm gonna go ahead and open a new graph document. And I'm just gonna call it picture.ms and in it I'm gonna put some MS macros so for example dot TL I'm gonna give it the title of picture document and I should probably turn syntax I while I'm at it there we go and let me just add some text just to say this is a picture there we go and if you know and if you know MS macros, this should look very familiar, but I'm gonna actually introduce two new macros that are very important for using pick. And that is, and those are dot capital PS for pick start and dot capital PE for pick end. And basically anything sandwiched between these two macros right here will basically tell pick, hey, draw this. So um, it'll actually take those commands and draw into the document. So pick commands are actually very easy to use. Um, so if I just wanted to draw a circle, all I have to do is say circle. And it's that easy. And once I compile it, you'll see that um, it really is that easy. So I'm going to type in graph picture the ms. And I'm going to pass it dash ms to process the ms macros, but also dash p to process the pick macros as well. And this will, you know, draw the pictures on our document. And we're going to output that as a PDF and put that into picture.pdf. So now if I open that in my PDF viewer, you'll see that now we have our title, but we also have our text and now something new, a picture. So that's ba like bare basics of how to use um, pick. And I'm going to go a bit more detail on add some stuff. So let's actually add... Let's add a few more things, or change a few few things. Uh, so, for example, I want to change the radius of my circle. So, in order to do that, there's no complicated syntax you need to remember. All I need to say is radius, and let's just say I want it to be a two-inch radius. I say radius two i. And so now, if I recompile, if I go ahead and recompile this. Let me go ahead and do that. Graph our picture ms dash ms dash p tpf. I go ahead and do that. You'll see that our that our circle is actually two inches now. Just as easy as that. And of course, there's a lot of other things that you um, you can do as well. Um, for example, you can. Oh, I'm gonna go ahead and label this. Um, you can add labels to it, labels to it, of course. So anything between parentheses will be considered a label. So I'm just gonna say this is a circle. So now, so now when I recompile this, you'll see that now we have our label. This is a circle. Pretty straightforward. I'm gonna go ahead and actually add another shape as well. Let's add a box. So. Um, let's go ahead and do that and recompile. So now we have our box to the right of the circle. And if you notice something that you notice something that graph will actually draw pictures from left to right. So it'll draw the circle, then the square to the right, and then another shape to the right. It keep, keeps on going. And of course you can change that. For example, I'll show you in a moment. You can actually draw pictures above and below, or um, below and above, or diagonal, or really any orientation you want. But by default, it draws from left to right. So let's change a few aspects of this box. 
So I want to say the width is one inch and the, and the height is two inches. And I'm going to say, I'm going to label this box. And you know what? I'm just going to add a second label because why not? So let's just say rectangle because it's a rectangle. Um, so let's recompile that. So now we have our resize box with our two labels in it. So that's basically, you know, majority of the, um, majority of the things you can do with shapes. Of course, you can also change things like I can have, um, let's do, if I say dashed after box, um, of course, it'll give the box dashed lines. But besides that, there's not too much you can do with shapes. Um, there are more, you know, of course, other shapes like arrows, arcs, um, arcs, curves, and just lots of things in general, triangles. But um, that's the majority of shapes. I'm going to be actually showing you how to um, uh, change the orientation, not the orientation, but the location of the shapes themselves. So you can actually see that, it, you know, like I said before, it draws shapes left to right. What if I want this box below the circle? Well, in between the circle and box commands, I actually have to specify where I want to move the next shape. So let's just say, uh, with the move command, of course. So I say move, let's say down. I want to move down, um, for example, one inch from the last circle. So I say move down one inch from bottom of last circle. And I go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and recompile this. And oh, uh, scroll down a bit there. But as you can see, we now have our rectangle one inch below our circle. And like I said, these commands are very straightforward and easy to use. All it does is move down one inch from the bottom of our last circle. It's really easy as that. Um, and that's how you move different objects. So I'm actually be showing you how to actually use um, define macros in PIC for pictures, because you can define you can define macros for any macro system. So why is PIC an exception? So I'm gonna be actually showing you how to define some macros. So to, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of all of this right here. And so now, of course, if I recompile our document, we're going to have no picture whatsoever. So let's actually define some macros to reuse. So in order to actually define a macro and pick, you use the define command, and then you give the name of the macro. So for example, I'm going to say tree, and you give it the, where is it, the percent symbol. And to end the macro, it's the percent symbol. So anything between these two um, uh, percent signs is going to be a macro. So I'm going to say line, we're going to create a line and it's going to go down, let's go 0 0.25 inches. And after that, let's just say, hmm, we'll have a line that goes right 0 0.15 inches. And then uh, semicolons actually separate commands just like just like in most languages like C or um, shell scripts or really anything. Um, so a semicolon, I'm going to separate line right and have the next command, which is going to be move right. And I'm going to say 0 0.2 inches. And now we're going to give it this, which if you've used shell scripting before, this will be very familiar. Um, dollar sign one means, means hey, this is our um, first argument, and you'll you'll see how it's used in a moment. And it's in parentheses because we want it to be our label. So we're gonna say dollar sign one, and we're gonna say left just for justify it to the left. And so that's gonna be between that. And so now this is gonna be our macro, which is gonna be tree. And just like any macro, if we go ahead and recompile our document, it's nothing because we we defined a macro, but we didn't use it. It's just like defining a function in a programming language. You can define a function, but if you don't use it, it's not going to show up or do anything. So I'm going to go ahead and use this macro. So let's say tree, and in parentheses, we're going to give it our argument. So let's say our first item in this tree is going to be uh, our car. How about that? So now when I run this and recompile it, you'll see that we have our beginning of our tree right here, which is car. 
And you can actually see that the first argument right here, car, is being passed over to this dollar sign one and becoming our label. So that's basically how basically how my macros work. But of course I can also, the whole reason we define this macro is to use it multiple times. So let's add a few more items. So I'm gonna say car, house, um, dog, money. Yeah, there we go. And so now if you run this, you'll see that our macro we just defined is um, being used to create this tree. And so that's the basics of defining macros. So now with um, all of our knowledge, I want to create a diagram. A, um, I want to create a diagram of Vim modes. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and delete all of this text right here, our newly defined macro. And let's create a picture. So um, I'm going to actually go ahead and recompile this, recompile this document so we don't have anything on it. There we go. And so now let's create a diagram. So first things first, we want to say down because we want to, we want to move down a bit. And I want a I want an ellipse. So we go ahead and do that. Oh, go ahead and do that. And so we have the beginning of our diagram. And in this list ellipse, I will say this mode is going to be normal mode. And of course, like I said, this diagram is going to be of the Vim modes. So we have our normal mode. And so now we want to move down, let's say 1.25 inches. And then we're going to have a circle. We're going to have a circle with a radius of, let's say, 0 0.3 inches. And this circle is going to be labeled insert. So now we have our next, our um, one of our modes, which is insert. So now let's go ahead and create a, another one. So I'm going to say move left one inch from left. So what we're doing is going to move left one inch from the left of, the, of our last circle. So we're gonna be moving in this direction. Uh, from left of last circle. And we're gonna be drawing a box there. So now when we recompile this, you see we now have our box to the left. And let's draw a, another box to the right of our insert circle. So let's say move right one inch from right of last circle and say and we'll add a box there so now we have um sort of our diagram of course i'll go ahead and label these two boxes so this box is going to be visual mode and this box is going to be ex mode and these, of course, if you don't know Vim, these are this, um, some of the modes you can go into. So um, if you haven't watched my Vim video, I recommend you do that because I actually explain a bit the different modes for Vim and how it's not a normal text editor, but a modal text editor. But that, like I said, that's a different video. Um, so now we have our different modes. So I want to actually draw lines between these uh, so we can actually uh, see that we're going between different modes or diagram it. So I'm going to say arrow and the arrow is going to be from the lower left of our last ellipse and so we're going from the lower left of this last ellipse right here to, to the top of our first box so ellipse to top of first box and so let's recompile that. And so now we have our first arrow. And I'm gonna go ahead and copy that. And I'm gonna go ahead and copy that and just change left to right. So from low or from lower right of last ellipse 
to top of second box. So now we recompile that. We have our second arrow. And finally, time for our last arrow, which we do arrow. Let's go ahead and copy this and say arrow from bottom of last ellipse to top of last circle. And there we go, there's a diagram. Um, of course, I, you can go back and forth between these different modes. So if I want to specify um, a different type of arrow, for example, a double-sided arrow, I can just change all these to this. And Groff will recognize that this is a double-sided arrow. So if I go ahead and do that, and recompile, you'll see now we have our double-sided arrow. And here's our diagram for um, our Vim diagram. So that's really been the basics of how to use PIC. Um, what I just covered is probably, I, I, I won't say it's surface level, but it's there's a lot more to PIC than what I just, uh, I just uh, showed you guys. It's very, they're very deep macros. You can do a lot more with them. But this has just been the basics and how to create simple diagrams and simple pictures. So yeah, this is um, Pick Macros. I'll see you guys whenever.